Hey Fit Fam, we are live on Mary's Kitchen at Tochi Ramen located at 1151 Pemna Highway. If you're in the mood for delicious ramen noodles made with broth that's been cooking for 12 hours, for some yummy Japanese appetizers or rice bowls, Tochi Ramen is definitely a must try. Let's go inside and meet the manager and chef Ralph. Hey Ralph! How's it going? Good, and you? Oh, I'm good. Uh, so today we'll be showcasing our ramen and our tapa side of our ramen restaurant over here. Okay. Um, so I'm going to start off by, uh, we'll still take over the ramen. Yeah, so let's our, take a look. Yeah. So this is our ramen area. Okay. Um, we have our toppings here and our hot um, element over here filled with pork, chicken, sushi chicken, and our marinated eggs. Okay, on the so side. for our viewers that aren't aware of what ramen is, what is ramen noodles? So ramen is a ja uh, Japanese culture. Uh, it's a very big del delicacy in, in Japanese culture. Um, it, what we do here is we have broth that is made 12 hours, from 12 hours, uh, that's just for the pork broth. And our chicken broth is also made 6 hours constantly on a daily basis. Alongside that, our noodles are made in-house daily. Uh, it's always fresh and I can show you on the yeah, side. let's take a look. So this is our machine, uh, it's especially, especially from Japan. It's um, all the way ship from Japan. Uh, we have a specific person coming in every single day, making the noodles constantly, making about two batches. We have all our cases over here. Um, and These are all your fresh noodles. Uh, our fresh noodles are actually right here. Oh, here, okay. The refrigerator. And these are our fresh noodles right here. And these are made in house every single day? That's correct. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. And so with our broth, we have, um, right now we have our, our pork broth. It's uh, boiling for about 12 hours. Um, later this evening, we're going to be putting uh, vegetables inside of it and it should be finished tomorrow. Uh, we have this constantly cooking for, for 12 hours straight. Uh, with our chicken broth, we also have it for cooking for another six hours as well. Um, and so let's get started on the ramen. Okay. So the first ramen that we're going to be making today is the uh, pork original. Our pork, uh, we have the pork original, we have the spicy rug, and the vegetarian. These are our three most popular um, dishes of, of our ramen side. And uh, yeah, so on our here we have our taris as well. Uh, this is what we use to make our flavor of our broth. What is this one? This one is going to be our original, oh, the uh, original? Our popular dish. Okay. And yeah. And then on this one we have our spicy rug. This is a soy based tare. It gives the flavor for the spicy rug to make it a bit spicier. And if you're not in the mood for any meat or anything like that, we have we do have a vegetarian option as well. And so is this made out of tofu then? Uh, it's made out of uh, egg. Oh, egg, okay. I just love these bowls, they're so beautiful. Yeah, very detailed, <laughs> um, very glossy as well. Yes. For our spicy garlic, we do add a little bit of a paste to it as well. And what's this? Uh, this is our spicy garlic paste. It oh, gives, spicy it, it makes, paste. It gives the flavor more, uh, give that kick to it. Got it, I see. And over here we already have our freshly made um, broths as well. Uh, what we do is we take, uh, we portion it to a uh, mouth where we can heat it up. And then we just let that go in for right now. Uh, okay. We wait for the soup to boil. And over here we have our, um, our ramen boiler. This is what we use to cook the noodles. Uh, we cook it at a specific time, at a specific temperature as well. And uh, yeah. And how long does it take to cook? Uh, it takes about a minute. Which oh, makes just it, a which minute. It, okay. It's pretty. Uh, it gives it that uh, instant ramen vibe, but also right. the, authentic, the authenticity of the uh, Japanese culture. And it's so fresh too. Exactly. So everything is really made on the spot then. Exactly. Okay. And what makes us better is that the customers outside they can see us doing everything from here, mm -hmm. knowing that uh, that uh, gives them that vibe as well. Okay. They are actually in a Japanese culture ramen bar. Um, yeah, so over here we have our freshly ramen noodles on this side. And uh, what we do to make it a little bit easier is just make it, we break it up. Oh, you break it up, okay, it up. loosen it. Yeah. You know, I've never actually had fresh ramen before. Really? I've only had the instant ramen, but I mean, it's not the same thing because it comes in a package and, yeah. you know, it's full of salt, so yeah. I'm actually looking forward to this. Yeah. So our um, demographic usually is more towards like college students and people of that nature as well because you know in college they always want something fast and easy to eat, right? Right. And so ramen is basically one of those top things in the ramen in the ramen uh, industry for co uh, college students as well. They always want to try something new, right? Um, yeah. And so when the when the broth is boiling just as it is right now, okay. uh, that's when we start putting the uh, noodles down as well. Oh, and look, you have the timer on too. One minute, exactly. 
during this process, we uh, during this process we uh, break up the noodles furthermore inside the um, in the wrong boiler just to make sure that the noodles aren't stuck together, so it's not all clumped up. And uh, we usually time it to a specific point where the broth is still hot when the noodles are just finished as well. Oh, so you're timing everything so it's all done at the same time. Got it. Wow. And what do we have over there? And so for our vegetarian broth, Oh, the vegetarian broth, okay. We do not use any um, uh, pork broth or chicken broth. We simply use um, hot water. It's, uh, it brings out a lot of flavor within the uh, vegetarian as well. And so just as our noodles are finished, we uh, stop the timer. And this is probably one of my favorite parts about having the ramen, is that you can drain the water just like how they do it in the Japanese bars in Japan. So you're also getting a show too. <laughs> Lay it softly in there. Oh, here we go again. <laughs> I think that must be the funnest part of making noodles. <laughs> yeah, everyone uh, always comes here and they always want to like, oh wow, that's pretty cool. And plus it makes a nice uh, nice Instagram photo as well. Oh, of course. Yeah. Get a little exercise too with two hands. Yeah. <laughs> so we end up mixing the um, paste together. So okay. it's not uh, so the flavor actually is all spread out for you. Right, right. And then you always have the noodles on the one side? Yep. I guess for presentation too, right? Exactly. Okay. If we just drop it in the middle, it'll splash all over the place. True, and yeah. It uh, kind of takes away from the show. Mm-hmm. And with here, uh, everything we do here from here is, is very careful because um, we don't want to mix the broths with the vegetarian, right? Right, right. So that's what we do as well. And with that, we... Uh, Oh, then just, dip it in, yep. And just wash it off. Perfect. The favorite part about uh, doing this ramen stuff is is that uh, you can make it look as beautiful as you want and still look, uh, still look authentic as well. And what do we have here? So this is our mushrooms. It's, it's, oh, uh, she talked mushrooms. It's actually um, woodier. Oh, woodier, really? Woodier uh, fungus, okay. yeah. So, and then what I'm doing right now is adding bamboo shoots. Mm -hmm. uh, seasoned bamboo shoots and also some green as well. Just a nice specific one right there. And then on this side we have our hot elements of the pork. This pork we have seared every every day as well. Um, just want to get some nice pieces of here. And what's over here? So right here all we have our, egg. yeah, our marinated egg. And Is do all the bowls have eggs? Uh, no, but they do come with, a like if you would like an option, we do charge for a, another egg as well. I see, okay. And also, we use chicken as well. And what's this? This is our sous vide chicken. Everything we have here is local as well. The pork, the pork that we slice, pork broth that we use, and there's our original pork. And it's topped off with a nori sleeve. And there you go. Wow, look so at that. Is, that. That's beautiful. That is our original. And now the original we're gonna, pork? And now we want to be moving to our spicy rug. This one's also another popular. Um, it's uh, obviously when you've had um, instant noodles, they always come with the option of spicy in there, right? If you would like that. Right. So um, what we do is try to add that, that type of vibe to our ramen as well, as well as um, so it's still more of a hotter kick to it as well. Mm -hmm. So the chili that we use here, um, we can also, you can ask for it on the side as well, just in case you your spice tolerance is not that high, uh, which is what we use over here. Oh, and just a little bit too. Yeah. And then we top it off with some chili string. Give it that uh, little elevated height over there. And then going back for another uh, and we top it off with our chili oil. What was that garnish? 
On the garnish is chili strings. It's oh, also it's just, it's just basically chili peppers sliced into very thin slices. I've never seen yeah. that before. It also adds more kick to it. Uh, obviously, we want to make it as spicy as we can, right. yet still enjoyable as well. Mm -hmm. and so our vegetarian is our, our uh, very popular um, for uh, people who aren't really more of a, a meat type. Uh, and basically, for the uh, vegetarian, it's we have all the toppings. So we have our uh, wood here. We also have our spinach. And the thing I really like most about the vegetarian is that uh, when you finish the product, it makes it look like a very nice, elegant uh, rainbow. And it looks hearty too, actually. Yeah. It really does. Is it that nice, vibrant color? And then we top it off with our tofu. More pepper strings. Add just a little kick to it. Uh, it's not too spicy. It's not too spicy. The chili strings, but it does add a little bit more flavor to our our rumble as well. Mm -hmm. and yeah, those are three rumbles. Wow, that looks beautiful. Right. And Can we put that on top? sure. Oh, yeah. Let's have our viewers take a look at this. Okay. So this was the pork belly. The pork original. The pork original comes with uh, woodier mushroom salt. Uh, um, marinated bamboo shoots and green onion, topped with cha siu pork, sugi chicken, and a marinated egg topped with some nori as well. Nice. And then... Now, Ralph, let me ask you, what is your favorite? What's the most? My favorite is probably be the original. The I mean, original? It's, it's very, you have all this meat in there, you got the eggs, you got the chicken, you got the pork, you got the, you got the vegetables, and you got the nori. The broth is also very rich. It also it's very creamy and rich as well, and I think that's what brings more people into it. Is it just tastes very uh, well as well. Uh, the spicy garlic over here. Um, if you're not in the mood for uh, if you're in the mood for something more spicy, I mean obviously here it is. We uh, added three elements of spice. We have the chili oil, the chili paste, and the chili strings, as well as our chili paste for the broth as well. And it's also topped off with bean sprouts, um, wood ear, bamboo, and green onion, topped with uh, chashu pork as well. And if you're also not a fan of uh, any meat as well, we have we do offer a vegetarian ramen as well. This is our, probably our most colorful yet tasty ramen bowl. We have woodier, uh, woodier mushroom, spinach, bean sprouts, bamboo shoot, um, corn, and green onion topped with tofu as well, and topped with chili string. And there you go. All right, what do we have next? All right, and so for, if you're not in the mood for ramen, we also do offer appetizers as well. We have tapas. And today I'm going to be showing you how, to, how we do our tempura flour, our cauliflower tempura, and our freshly um, new uh, rice bowls as well. We just started this around uh, before we uh, before COVID happened, but uh, it's pretty still of a, of a very good seller. So um, we weigh our cauliflower, which is in our dish over here. How so, did you guys come up with the concept of cauliflower, of all things? Um, well. Cauliflower is also our, um, is, is when I, anything, well, obviously you want to have cauliflower that has um, a, a taste to it as well. Right. Tempura also for everyone, you know, everyone, everyone knows what uh, shrimp tempura mm -hmm. is and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Obviously we're giving a new kick to it by adding veg, putting a vegetable in it. Okay, I like people, that. Yeah, mm -hmm. people are like, oh, uh, don't think uh, I really would have uh, a, uh, I don't think I'd really have a uh, uh, vegetable covered um, tempura. I think anything covered in tempura, tempura is so good. Absolutely, I, I would agree with you 100%. And over here we have our tempura batter. So we used to uh, give that uh, cauliflower a nice big uh, crunch to it. Mm -hmm. And so what we do is we uh, kind of soak it inside the tempura flour. And what makes it so crispy and so, so, makes it so crispy is that uh, we do cook it with the uh, fry already uh, inside. And so, just place it gently inside. Oh, I can just smell it already, it's so good. Yeah, and so what we do also as well is that we, um, we make sure that uh, the tempura is always uh, constantly moving so it's not really stuck so to, uh, stick together, yeah. right. Yeah. 
what I really like about uh, cauliflower is that it's uh, it's so um, it's so unique in its own way. Where it's like uh, we do call it snowball here because uh, when you top it off, it looks like a big giant snowball, flavored uh, snowball as well. Um, I find that cauliflower is becoming more and more popular. I'm seeing it in more restaurants now. You can turn you're using cauliflower for everything. I find. Yeah, uh, in special dishes like. Um, they have it like in, in mac and cheese, they, they start doing that, they, they're just adding our spawn cake to it as mm -hmm. well. And so yeah, uh, in the meantime, uh, this is what we use uh, for our cauliflower. Um, uh, we use our uganagi sauce, it's just basically um, eel, uh, like eels, eel sauce. Okay. And we also have our spiced mayo, we, which we make in-house as well. Um, it also adds a nice kick to it, this is a very popular um, one everyone always asks for on the side. or it's just a it's a very uh, unique uh, thing. It, it's it's like um, it's like a uh, we call it spicy mayo here. It's like uh, our cupai mayo or Japanese cupai mayo, but we had obviously a kick to it, make it a little bit more spicy. And once again, this is made every day. Uh, yeah, made house, made in house every day. Made in house yeah. every day. So uh, when we put cauliflower to cook, uh, we did start um, doing um, rice bowls uh, not too long ago. Uh, the rice bowl that we're we'll making today is a beef bun. So our uh, we started making um, beef uh, beef thons or beef rice bowls not too long ago. Um, They're probably one of our most popular. With the addition to we do have a uh, pork belly rice bowl and a chicken karagi rice bowl. Uh, but today I'm going to be showing you our most popular one, which is our beef thon. Uh, it's very flavorful, very colorful as well, and tastes absolutely amazing. Um, it's probably my favorite beef thon. Or it's probably my favorite rice bowl as well. So now the cauliflower is finished. Uh, we kind of just drain the excess oil off of it. Tongs. Oh, I can just hear that crunch too. I think the best part about um, popping on the appetizer side is that you can make it look so nice as well. Like when you finish off uh, making up the uh, Temporal flower. It it looks so like it looks so like professional, you know. So we drizzle uganagi sauce on it. Two layers, and then uh, we use our in-house spicy mayo. And we just drizzle with that on top as well. And you guys said this is like your snowball. Yeah. So it looks like a snowball, really. Mm -hmm. It looks it's in a nice half spherical shape, and uh, we do top it off. Yeah, you know, it looks like ice cream, but it looks like fried deliciousness to me. <laughs> so we do top it off with uh, nori flakes as well. It's mm -hmm. just basically shredded seaweed. We just top it off here as well. And we also top it off with our chili strings as well, just like we saw on the oh, wrong chili side. chili strings, wow. It also adds a nice kick to it. Uh, it accompanies the uh, spicy mayo as well. Nice kick to it. And there's our color yeah, color. I thought it was saffron before because yeah. of the, the strings, <laughs> yeah. right? And so that's our cauliflower. Right here. That's delicious. Thank you for that. That's how yeah, you get your yeah. kids to eat vegetables. Exactly. Come here. Yeah. <laughs> and so I'm going to be showing you how to do our, our beef on rice bowl. Okay. So I have a beef ready inside here. And uh, while that's making, I'm going to show you our rice cooker. So uh, what we do is we take our, our uh, white bowls over here. Mm -hmm. Pretty smaller portion, but I promise you, worth it. And so just in the back over here, or back storage oh, over here. Oh, just in the back. Okay. We do have our... Our rice cooker. All that steam in there. So we do have our steamed rice. Uh, we also make this as well every single day. Um, top it off. Okay. Right there. And so this is basically our base over here. And um, what we do is we just do that as well. And. What we do is, this one takes a little bit more time, but also at the same time, it makes it look very nice in the end. Right. Which is uh, what always I look forward to. Uh, what I really care about inside this um, in this industry is that the presentation looks nice. Yeah. As well as the flavor and everything as well, right? So when our um, beef is ready. And I guess they say you really do eat with your eyes. Exactly. Presentation really is everything. Presentation is what brings consumers in. You don't want to yes. eat, you just don't want to eat a you know a bowl full of just random toppings on there and just topped off with whatever, right? So, um... So since our beef is done, what we do is um, we take it to the stove over here. Okay. And 
give it oil. Just uh, what's cool about this part is that uh, when before we even did rice balls, we weren't really used to using the soap element as much. But uh, now that we have a actual reason to use the the stove, it makes it way more better in our experience as, as, as kitchen chefs, right? Mm -hmm. And so, um, in the meantime, what we do as well, we want to top it off with oil, but also at the same time, we want to um, give it that nice flavor into it as well. So, what we do is we take, we uh, top our onions a little bit. Just to add to that flavor as well. Yeah. Oh, so you're cooking the onion first. Exactly. Yep. Got it. I just wanted uh, to bring that uh, flavor outside of the, uh, uh, bring more flavor into the, uh, into the rice bowl as well. So, uh, usually when the pan's all heated up, that's when we start adding our uh, top onion to it. Just like the cauliflower, the second I put the beef in there, you're going to smell it right away. It's oh, I smell, smell it right away. Yeah. <laughs> Anything with onions in it, I, I think... Uh, uh, smells and brings the taste into it. Exactly. Obviously. Yep. Agreed. So we don't really want the the onions to brown. We want it to be we just just enough to bring the the flavor outside of the I onions. I see. Well. Okay. And uh, we take our beef. Take our beef. I just can't believe you guys make your broth in house. I'm looking at this pot and it's huge. That's crazy. Yep. We do. It's um. We, what we do is we, the reason why we cook it for 12 hours is we want to get the most out of our bone marrow. Right, right. Uh, we want to bring out the flavor. It, it's, it's pretty good for you as well. And it is good. There's we, lots of protein too, yeah. I heard. And so when our beef is done, we just want to add it on top of here. And right away, you can already get that, that smell of the beef in there. Yes, yes. This is our uh, Kobe beef. Oh, Kobe beef! <laughs> so we don't really want to cook it too much, so right. so, it, so it doesn't taste as good. Mm -hmm. But then when it's a nice brown flavor, like our black brown color, like that, we tell them to take our our uh, Korean our Korean barbecue sauce and drop a little bit in there. And we just wait for the flavors to soak up. I know, Jerome's hungry right now. His mouth is all watery. <laughs> and you guys can see Jerome, it's so funny. <laughs> now as it starts to simmer like that, we turn down the heat. And then we take it to our rice bowl over here. And we just want to make it look. Very nice. Now presentation again. Look at that. And uh, to finish off the uh, pork don, we do have pickled ginger, which we have in the back over here. And gives it a nice color to it, so it doesn't look too dark, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, I love it. It's beautiful. And then we also add green onions to it as well. Sprinkle that on top. And to accompany the beef, we use sesame seeds as well. Beautiful. And just like that, we have our beef done. Look at that. Well, thank you awesome. so much, Ralph. It was a pleasure. Thank you for having us in the kitchen. Pleasure's all mine, guys. Showing us the ramen noodles and the cauliflower tempura and your beef It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much, Ralph. It's been, it's been a pleasure on myself as well. I, I'm pretty sure everyone at Chuichi appreciates you guys coming by. Awesome. And uh, thank you, guys. Thanks, guys, for tuning in, and I'll see you next week. Bye now. Later.